Buongiorno, buongiorno. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's get to the heart of this path that we designed with the partners, uh, with Be Open, with Interni. It's a great pleasure for me to see this room filled up with people of all ages, uh, ranging from students to professionals. It's going to be worth it. You will see it for yourselves. We've already talked enough uh, to introduce uh, the conference, so I would like to invite uh, uh, the panel of women that we have invited that will talk about uh, sustainability from different standpoints. So I'm going to ask Claire Brass, Sass Brown, Luisa Collina and Maria Sebregon, so many topics uh, to talk about uh, that we're going to be happy. So uh, let me invite our four speakers to take their seats. We will uh, take a broad view on the topic. Uh, don't expect uh, to hear about sustainability only linked to design or living. We'll talk about that too, but we will go much beyond. Uh, my introduction uh, we'll try to give you the spirit of uh, uh, the following uh, uh, three days. Be open should be uh, the key to read uh, uh, this uh, series of events, uh, which is quite dense. And that's why I would like to start by talking about what we define as new paradigms. Uh, why do we use these uh, words? If we want to think big and be open to the future, we can no longer think only in terms of trends. Uh, sustainability is not a trend, it's a paradigm. It means uh, that it is a kind of dimension on which uh, we will continue to work for 20, 25, 30 years down the road. Uh, the best example is probably the hygienic uh, revolution that took place at the end of the 19th century. Nobody talks about uh, 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 that revolution today. So sustainability will take the same path. Sustainability will become a given in the near future, which means thinking together about a real uh, change of era. This actually leads us to the next two paradigms uh, that we wanted to introduce uh, and that uh, will be discussed also tomorrow and the day after tomorrow with other outstanding international speakers. Uh, we will talk about uh, happiness and quality, daily happiness, which becomes crucial today because uh, we all know that what is at the center is care for our body, beauty, and the energy that we need to live in a better way. And then we will talk about uniqueness. So we need to work on the concept of globalization, a concept which is uh, much different from what we are used to thinking. The first globalization could be translated in, into world Americanization. This doesn't take place, as we know. We know that the uniqueness of each place has its own strength. Being here in Milan today is important. It's important if it is uh, set against the universal scenario. So unique and universal is going to be the paradigm we will talk about with designers and architects uh, on Thursday afternoon for the closing of this uh, big closing conference. Now, let's consider another assumption, Kairos. So what does it mean? For years, we've been talking about lifestyle. It seemed that each and every one of us had to choose a whole world of style as a reference to live in. We know that this is not real. It is much more interesting and stimulating to experience life occasions and take what ancient Greeks defined at Kairos, the time of opportunity, the time that you need to be able to seize timely and promptly if it is allowed by external conditions. What we will say today about sustainability should be connected to this idea of Kairos. We have to use languages, logics, and projects that are set in the time that we live in today. Now, going 
beyond the militant uh, ecological view and gets into the real quality of life, where innovation, as uh, the director of Be Open said, innovation is no longer for few trend sectors in fashion or design. Innovation today is something that allows us to live and to survive. It's something that crosses the borders and covers everything, 360 degrees all around, and it allows us uh, to redefine the concepts of our activity, uh, whether design, concepts. We redefine the idea of luxury excellence, but also the idea of simplicity and standards. So the dimension of standards uh, today is redefined in terms of intensity of the experience. It means uh, that the standard can no longer be gray. It can no longer be simply a commodity, but it must become the unit of measure of life quality or quality of living. So it must be accessible, simple, democratic, but because of this, it must be even more innovative. The intensity of experience, the transparency of production processes, all this is related to the idea of sustainability that we will discuss today together with our panelists. In this respect, so there is a big uh, um, shift, and we are just at the beginning, in my opinion. We are starting to rediscover a few words that would uh, actually scare us off a few years ago. Talking about beauty, truth, or vocation, almost a religious term, in uh, the midst of the postmodern era that we are um, living behind ourselves would have been misplaced. So also in the world of art, design, and creativity, we come from a period where many people were convinced that everything is re relative, that perceived quality is better or more important than real quality. What matters is communication. After all, image is more important than identity. Now, all these steps are outdated now. The crisis is actually a great opportunity, a great stimulus to move ahead. Well, actually, we should not define it as a crisis anymore. This is a paradigm shift and a big one. It will last for a long period of time. Those who think that the crisis will be over sooner or later and we will go back to the past, those are wrong. We have to be become equipped for that. Companies, uh, creative people, artists have already understood that. So they are um, weathering the crisis greatly. They are reaching extremely satisfactory results with our companies that in 2011 recorded plus 20, plus 30 percent in their turnover by adopting the new paradigms. So being a truer, more authentic, being able to move towards being able the dimension of being able to do uh, of sustainability, something that's achievable but still beautiful. So integration between ethics and aesthetics is a great opportunity. Now, I'm going to show you some video clips, uh, or some ads, actually, because in the end, commercials represent Kairos, are the result of our time. This is a wonderful Japanese campaign that, besides the product and the logo that the ad refers to, puts together all the values I've uh, talked to you about. So let's uh, watch it together, and then we will comment on it.
Ecco, touch wood. Touch wood. Well, I think that the language of this campaign, but especially the prerequisites, the backstage of this campaign is almost uh, more interesting than the video. The xylophone is uh, one kilometer long and it exactly reproduces the notes of the famous air, the famous song that you listen to, was built, there's no special effects, uh, it was built piece by piece, uh, exactly the way we believe is important. Uh, sustainability must be based on an extraordinary uh, artificial intelligence construction that's compatible with the natural environment, uh, which is all human. All culture, it lies in being able to do integration between ethics and aesthetics. We do believe that this is an important tenet that we may want to discuss together with the panelists of today. This also leads us to think about the new concept of simplicity, because it's uh, the idea is simple, but its implementation is dif difficult. The perfection of this campaign derives from an extraordinary complex work that lies behind the curtains. I think that this is the great challenge that we need to tackle in the area of sustainability. Also, by defining a new relationship between public and private, common assets that today are again decisive in the quality of our life, as, it, as was the case in the pre-industrial era. Vis-a-vis -a, -vis a privatized that type of assets that, that appear to be the real standard of quality in the near past. Today is no longer true. This leads us to think within the framework of classical environmental sustainability, but also leads us to think beyond, i.e. social commitment to social innovation, which is uh, represented by this wonderful American uh, campaign. So we are putting together East and West uh, to the extraordinary uh, simplicity of the Japanese uh, with an extraordinary uh, communication ability and impactfulness of Americans. And again, the message is very clear. So not only do I take care of redistributing and avoiding the drugs that reach their deadline, their expiry date, which are not used in the rich world, but I'm explaining you how I do it, how much it costs, what are the processes behind it. So we are working on a process transparency. And uh, this is done by uh, representing it in a creative way, choosing uh, uh, 
the right music, strong, simple images, but also with a big emotional content. Uh, this is another element that, that should be considered carefully when we talk about sustainability. So far, this word has been uh, associated to new pauperism, to the idea of ideological boredom, and far too often it has been associated to a vision that's against something. Here we need to work in creative uh, terms by crossing and intermingling the relationships. So uh, this is not just a tribute to Maria Segregondi, who will close this meeting. I chose a campaign by Moleskine, which I believe is very uh, suitable in making us understand the relational uh, pattern that we should uh, uh, foster in the world. I think that the story of this advertising campaign is in line with the values that have been proposed. Being open here means to leave space to the creative people of, from all over the world, but it also implies taking on the responsibility of selecting, selecting quality. This is a crucial step for our future. And so, in the end, what we will talk about tomorrow and the day after tomorrow will also be focused around thinking together about this paradigm shift. The past was based on values of aspiration. People wanted to be like stars, uh, uh, having models to follow passively, evocatively, a model to identify with, uh, uh, where this is all more important than credibility. Now we are shifting towards a dimension of the future which is already present, but will certainly generate more possibilities and facets. And it's a future based on inspirations. It's a reason, the reasons why we are here. Uh, legacy is a great platform of inspiration. It's not just the world of uh, representation to say, look how good we are. It's an opening on what the future values could be. And it's done in a credible, credible way uh, with an ability to remember legacy where the classical wars are on the shoulders of giants. But also it implies an ability of uh, uh, planning. Uh, being future-oriented, it's a click vis-a-vis -vis the status. 
uh, which was guaranteed uh, to uh, creative people. Now we have to fight every day so we can no longer stand on our pedestals. And we have to do so by guaranteeing excellence. It's not luxury. It's not for few. Excellence means doing something in the best possible way and possibly better than anyone else. This value remains central also in the dimension of sharing and sustainability.